thanks again for joining in and tuning into my vlog. I upload several times a week, so please make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you never miss out on new and exciting content. Yay! Now in today's video, I'm going to suggest to you an effective way of setting boundaries for our children while minimizing the level of anger and resistance that we receive from them. Is that doable? Yes, how do I know it works? Because my mother has successfully um, used the same technique with me and my siblings, and I'm currently doing the same thing with my stepkids. We all know that boundaries are super important for our kids. It helps them grow up feeling that someone is keeping an eye out for them, caring for them, and guarding them. And also, when you know what's expected of you, it's much easier for you to make the right choice, which also promotes confidence and self-trust. But you know how sometimes we prefer to just let them get on with it because we fear that setting a boundary in that specific time and place would just lead to World War III, right? So I'm going to show you how to set the boundary in a peaceful manner, hopefully, and with the least amount of resistance, from my experience anyway. So let's face it, nobody really likes to constantly be told what to do. Not even when you're young, okay? But one of the main reasons that children are so opposed to boundaries in general is because they tend to connect boundaries with anger, with guilt, with loss of control, rather than with love, okay? And that usually is actually because that's the way we also perceive setting the boundaries. So why is that, okay? Well, when we need to set a boundary or remind our kid of the house rules or what is expected of them, it's normally done right after a child has tested the boundary, right? Which more often than not means that we are already frustrated with them and with their behavior. So we as parents usually find that struggle displayed in three different stages. Stage one is usually to be able to compartmentalize our anger, okay? And lay down the rule with compassion. Stage two is once we get backlash, of resentment, it is difficult to remind ourselves that we are the ones in control and the anger that we get from our kid belongs to them. We don't need to take on that anger ourselves. And stage three, that's like the aftermath. We many times find ourselves with leftovers of guilt. You know what I mean? And those will be worse depending how well or how poorly we've handled ourselves in stages one and two. Right, so what do we do to change that? How do we help children feel that the boundaries that we set for them are there to help and protect them as part of our job as loving and responsible parents? Well, we can help children connect between boundaries and care with these three simple steps. When we set the boundary or remind our kids of what's expected of them, it's important to calmly explain the reasoning behind it, okay? Reasoning. For example, lovey, uh, it is important that we brush our teeth to make sure that our teeth are healthy. Reasoning may not be fully grasped by very young children, okay? But they will remember the sense of mummy or daddy talking to them and spending the time explaining to them, which translates the care. And they will understand more fully the reasoning in time. Step two. Now, if this didn't work and we get resistance or we're being ignored, we need to issue a reminder or a positive note, okay? So instead of going something like, Max, I already told you, no phones at the table, which sounds angry, or something like, oh, Max, how many times have I told you, no phones at the table, come on, which sounds really disappointed with them. Try saying something like, Max, we don't use phones at the table, please put it aside, you can have it back when we finish. Thank you. Okay, and then you can even say that with a friendly smile, as long as it's not a mocking smile. Now remember, the action of enforcing a boundary, okay, is already challenging for your kid because they need to accept the fact that they are not the ones in control of the situation. So our anger is not gonna make it easier for them to accept it. It's probably gonna make it worse and you go into an ego fight, okay, and fight back. So the best way to lay down the law is through compassion. And lastly, tip number three, if you spot your kid breaking a rule and you have to enforce a consequence, make sure to use a calm tone and avoid blaming or shaming. For example, Max, I told you I will take the phone away, but you didn't listen to me, did you? So now you blew it and now you're going to lose your phone, just like I told you would happen, but you wouldn't listen. Hmm. Think about how you would feel if you were spoken to that way. And why not try something more like, Max, if you remember, we agreed that if you use your phone at dinner time, then you will lose your phone rights for the rest of the evening. Okay, so I don't want to do it, but unfortunately, I'm going to take your phone away now because you've been using it. Mm -hmm, and that's what we agreed. 
So you can still set the boundary while showing that you care, keep your tone nice and quiet so the child feels like we're on their side and not like we are some kind of enemy that just wants to make their life miserable. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sure, I can say it calmly the first time. As soon as I take the phone away, all hell breaks loose. And I say, absolutely, you're right, 100%. Been there many times myself. But all we have to do in that case is to try our best to maintain answering compassionately for as long as we can. I know you're angry, honey, and I'm sorry that I had to take the phone away, okay? But it's important that everyone respects and follows the house rules, okay? We keep it calm. This is not our anger, remember. Or something like, yes, honey, I understand that you're upset. I will probably be upset too if my mom took my phone away. Just remember to follow the rules like we agreed next time so you can keep your phone for the rest of the evening. Remember, when you stay calm, you remain in control. And that's when we have to remind ourselves that the frustration here is not ours, it's the child's, okay? We're not the ones whose phone been taken away. So part of our job is to remind ourselves that even though they might be angry and we're frustrated with them, we still love them. <laughs> it's really hard at that situation. And they're testing us, okay? And what we can do is show them that we love them by enforcing the rule with compassion. And it's a win-win because we're not only teaching them that we care and that the rules are not out there to get them, but we're also showing them how to deal with conflict without anger and hysteria. And I can guarantee you, the more we improve in keeping our cool, the more their reactions will also gradually calm down as well. Okay, You can't fight with somebody who's not out there to fight with you. Do you think you might try this technique at home? I really hope so, and if so, please let me know in the comments. Will you, will you not? In the meantime, make sure to like our video and subscribe below for more helpful tips. I really look forward to hearing what you have to say and seeing you on the next video. Ciao, ciao.